every single day when you sit down, use your laptop or your desktop, and you create documents, you create videos, you create uh, complex simulations, you do a lot of things with software, the outcome of which is very complex files. And those complex files don't mean anything in the absence of the software that knows how to interpret them. So imagine for a moment the extreme situation. It's the year 3000. You've just done a Google search. And let's even assume you're using Windows 3000. And you've been, I know, you, well, I'm sorry, uh, Kevin is looking very unhappy about that. But uh, just for, this is a hypothetical, Kevin. Uh, you're using Windows 3000 and you've just turned up a 1997 PowerPoint file. So now the question is, does Windows 3000 know how to interpret that file? And the answer is probably not. But you know, even, that's not an unfair dig at Microsoft. Even if it was an open source software thing, it's not clear that this stuff would survive and be maintained for over a thousand years. So the question is, how on earth do we continue to make the data that we're accumulating interpretable and meaningful over long periods of time. It, it's truly embarrassing to go to, uh, let's say, one of these special libraries that have many uh, manuscripts in them, uh, vellum manuscripts from 1000 AD that are still very readable. They're beautiful, in fact. They may be illuminated manuscripts. They've lasted a thousand years. And then, you know, you walk in there with your little DVD and the librarian says, and how long do you expect that to last? And it's really two questions. How long will the medium survive? You know, and then quite, how long will you have a piece of equipment that can actually read it? And how long will you have software which can take the bits that have been read and interpret them successfully? Well, I've had many discussions with librarians on this point. And I remember sitting in a meeting where one uh, young fellow got up and made the brash statement that this wasn't a problem and that, uh, you know, the important information would be upgraded and, you know, re, you know, rewritten in new applications so that it would survive. And the stuff that didn't get rewritten wasn't important and so nobody would care anyway. It took about a half an hour to get the librarians off the ceiling because they pointed out correctly, in my view, that sometimes you don't know what information is important for 100 years or more. And at NASA in particular, I want to say that this can be very, very important for scientific reasons, reanalyzing earlier data uh, in the light of new understanding of new models and new theories can be very, very powerful. The problem now is not only interpreting the bits and you know, what values did they uh, mean, but what conditions apply, under what conditions uh, were these data collected? What metadata needs to be present along with the actual measured material in order to make it possible to continue to understand and use and reanalyze the information? These are hard problems and they deserve some serious uh, attention. If we don't pay attention to them, we end up with what I've been calling a bit rot problem where all the data just eventually evaporates because it isn't useful. And it doesn't take very long for that to happen. It's already happening now. Uh, as in a small example, uh, if I produce PowerPoint slides on my Mac and then I take the file over to a, uh, a PC running uh, with Vista, for example, um, some of the imagery which might have been captured as TIFF files isn't interpreted successfully on the uh, Microsoft uh, PC version. And I'm not, I'm not, literally, I hope you'll believe me that I'm not sitting here trying to skewer Microsoft at all. It's, it's a, just an example of the difficulty of maintaining the interpretability of different formats over a reasonable period of time.